everyone and welcome back to the WTF1 podcast. As you can see, if you're watching this on YouTube, it's just myself and Tommy today. Matt is poorly and from the sounds of it, he's given it to you as well, Tommy, because you were together at Mercedes earlier this week. Yeah, I've got it as well, but I'm clearly a little bit behind, so I'm probably going to be ill for the Monday podcast. We'll find out. (laughs) Fantastic. We are a healthy bunch. Uh, Well, today we are previewing the Mexico Grand Prix. And before we get into things, something rather exciting to talk about quickly is we've got a WTF1 annual coming out for the 2021 F1 season. It's our first ever physical book. It's a great gift for Christmas, but you do need to pre-order quickly as there are only a limited number of copies. If you want to get your hands on one, and let's be honest, why wouldn't you? You can visit WTF1.com forward slash annual Or there's a link in the description to this video to get yours. Uh, Team WTF1 members also get an exclusive discount. Um, But yeah, it's something that I've written Tommy's help with. And it's going to be really, really cool. If people don't buy it, they essentially hate you because you've put so much effort (laughs) into it. So no pressure, guys. No pressure, guys. You know, it's it's fine if you don't get it. Right. Let's jump into some questions because we've been sent some over on Twitter. And um, let's start with, I guess, the elephant in the room. It's something that has been discussed a lot coming into this weekend. Obviously, Red Bull come into Mexico City as the favourites. Their car has a better setup to deal with this high altitude. Um, And Sergio Perez, home hero, uh, is actually in a race winning car going into his home Grand Prix. So there's been plenty of chatter about what would happen if you were Christian Horner and you had Sergio Perez leading leading the race, looks set to win his home Grand Prix, Max Verstappen's in second, you've got a Red Bull one too. What's going to happen if that situation unfolds? Because obviously everybody in the whole of Mexico wants Sergio Perez to win that race, but Max Verstappen is fighting for a championship. Um, I know it's a situation which I think it's fair to say seems maybe not super impossible, but maybe unlikely. We've seen so far this season, you know, Max has definitely been the number one driver in that team. And there have been very few examples where Sergio's got more pace than Max has. Um, So it's all very much, uh, you know, slim possibility. But hey, the 2021 F1 season has proved that absolutely anything is possible. Um, so at Kent Cameron asked, uh, will Red Bull ask Checo to give up the race win for Verstappen if they find themselves in a one-two position with Perez out front? Tommy, channel your inner Christian Horner um, and tell me what would you do if you were in his shoes? Yeah, you you kind of alluded to it. It's not a situation that has happened really this year. Um and you're right, the 2021 season is so crazy that it would just be sod's law that <laughs> this would be the only race it happened and Prez gets denied a home victory. I've seen this question asked a lot. Am I right in saying you did a poll and said, would you, won't you? And it was 50-50. Literally bang on 50-50. And That's... it wasn't like there were like two people that voted. There were like thousands and thousands of people that voted on it. Um, and obviously on Twitter, when you vote for polls, you can't actually see what people have said before you click the button. So it really is like people are split. Yeah, that's that's 50% voting with their brains and 50% voting with their hearts because there's absolutely no scenario in the entire <laughs> world that they're letting Sergio Perez win the race. Even if Lewis Hamilton... So, sorry, the only, the only situation they're letting Perez win the race is if Hamilton's in between them. Like, if yeah. there's an opportunity, if... If Verstappen is directly behind Perez, whether it's for first and second, second or third, third or fourth, ninth, even ninth or tenth, they are swapping them a thousand million percent. And the, that's and, a big and number. I, that <laughs> and I know, I know, it's not a popular, like it's not the popular thing. And I myself, even as a someone that likes Verstappen, and obviously, you know, he's in that championship hunt. I'd absolutely love Perez to win because you always love seeing the home hero win. Um, I'm sorry, but it would they'd be stupid not to do it. They would literally be stupid because they're against Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton in a world title fight, and they'd just be gifting seven points to Hamilton if they didn't do it. 
yeah, like you say, it's not going to be a popular opinion. And if you're Christian Horner, you might want to have to sort of sneak out of the country at night if that's a call that he has to make. But I mean, looking at Sergio Perez's history here in Mexico, it's a circuit that he's he's done okay in considering the cars that he was in. He's uh, every single race that he has finished here, he has scored in the points. His best result was seventh in 2019. Obviously, we didn't race here in 2020 because of the, the pandemic. 2018, he retired. 2017 and 2016, 10th place finishes. And 2015, a ninth place finish. So it's not somewhere, you know, where he's been maybe close to a podium or something like that. But there is no denying that he is in one of two cars that are really poisoned perfect for this circuit um, and we've even seen it with the Alpha Tauri you know looking through the speed trap a Honda powered car is the quickest in every single um, sorry every single sector yeah. a Honda powered car is quickest in so yeah like you say it would be it would be just Checo's luck that you know he he might this put is it the on race where he's and, ahead of Verstappen yeah yeah because I think that's like why him. I think that's why Christian Horner is almost dodging the question because he almost wants to uh, I think he even said to Sky it would be a lovely position to be in suggesting <laughs> that you know if we are one to great I'd love that but he's almost hoping that that situation doesn't <laughs> arise I guess because it hasn't all year. So there's almost like no need to talk about it because he doesn't want that pressure around the team, I guess, at the start. But yeah, he's getting um, sort of prodded a lot to answer like this question, would you would you do it? And he's kind of like, well, you know, we've not been in this situation this year and it's a team sport and all this. Like he's 100% doing it if he's in that situation. It's not going to be popular. But like you alluded to, it's very, very unlikely that this situation might even arise because Perez, um, while he's definitely improved and he's going to be lifted by his home crowd, he hasn't been there on pace with Verstappen uh, in a race which is expected. I mean, dream scenario for for Red Bull is Max wins a race and Perez is manages to beat both Mercs and finishes second. Um, and then that avoids the awkward situation of robbing his home win uh, it's great for for Red Bull, and then the crowd get Prez on the podium for the first time uh, in in the home race. Where they'll be going absolutely wild for. So, I imagine that's exactly what Christian Horn is hoping for, and not <laughs> and not this theoretical scenario that everyone's sort of making up to to say that if he's going to be robbed of his home win. Yeah, well, Max Verstappen is a two-time winner around here anyway, so he knows the track well. He obviously qualified on pole here in 2019, but that was snatched away after he was a bit naughty and was caught uh, speeding during yellow flags in in. I Quali. forgot about that until mm. I watched it the other day. I still, still adamant that's the stupidest thing he's ever done in his career because he, he bragged about it in the press conference <laughs> afterwards that he sped under yellows and they're like, okay. Like You've Red Bull team pilot. PR at the back, like Max, keep it down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, very silly move by him. Um, and that race, and I think he ended up finishing sixth in 2019. Um, but yeah, it's uh it's a strange situation. But like you say, F1 is a team sport, and Sergio Perez knew when he signed that Red Bull contract for this year. Max Verstappen is the golden, the golden child, as as it's often referred to. And uh, if such a situation would arise you know, team orders might come into play. Uh, I mean, team WTF, oh, sorry. No, sorry, I was going to say, I mean, they even pitted for us, didn't they, at Silverstone to, to take a fastest lap point off. Uh, so they're not they're not afraid to. There, there was even talk in the last race of, you know, could they have pitted Perez to take the fastest point lap point off Hamilton and it would have lost Perez a podium, but it would have helped them in the drivers, which would have been absolutely ridiculous. And thankfully they didn't do that. But Quite it just yeah. it does just show that, um, Perez is there to He's the, the a dream in scenario. The game, isn't he? The, the dream scenario for Red Bull is Perez finishes every race second behind Max the rest of the year. Um, so yeah, we shall see. We go to Brazil next, which is obviously a, a good Red Bull track as well. We interrupt this WTF1 podcast for a very quick chat about one of our sponsors for this episode, Beer Fifty Two. We've been sent a free case of eight craft beers from Beer 52 and you can get in on the action too. All you have to do is go to www.beer52.com forward slash WTF1 and cover just the postage costs of £5.95. Remember, you have to be over 18, otherwise you're not allowed. 
Beer 52 is the world's largest beer club with over 170,000 active members. And each month, members are sent a case with a different theme, so it doesn't get boring. It comes with a magazine and snacks, and if you don't like dark beer, you can just choose the light option. The opportunities are endless. To make sure you feel as comfortable with the offer as possible, you can pause or cancel at any time. There are no commitments here. You just got to enjoy the beer and that's it. So what are you waiting for? Go to www.beer52.com forward slash WTF1 and pay just the £5.95 postage to get all of this right now. Right, let's get back to the podcast. Team WTF1 member Levs F1 said, is stealing Checo's home win through team orders worth it if Max wins the championship, essentially? I would say although it's going to be unpopular with the Mexican listeners. Yes, definitely. What about you? Uh, yeah. I mean, yes, it's worth, it is worth it for Red Bull. You know, they would, it, if they got to the end of the season and Verstappen lost the, the championship by two points, um, they're not going to be there going, well, at least Sergio Perez <laughs> won in Mexico. Um, are they? Unfortunately, it's, it's, you know, it'd be an incredible moment and I'm not alone. And I think 99% of people would absolutely love Sergio Perez to win the race, like me included. Mm. Um, but it's the, it's also like unfortunate that um, the, the race is so late in the calendar that it really is that sort of crunch time mm-hmm. of race cards, whereas it, it's the third race of the season um, or, or even, you know, when Max was uh, quite a way ahead in Austria, uh, and you know the the calendar fell then. Then maybe that's where they go. Oh yeah, all right. Um, you know, Perez. We don't need to like completely sacrifice him at this point. But th- this point in the season, it really is every single point means everything because I mean it's been so close. The the last since Austria, this is the biggest gap it's been, and that's only twelve points. So it shows that it's unbelievably close and. The, the title could literally be decided by things like fastest lap points and all that kind of stuff. So I yeah. really hope it doesn't come down to fastest lap points. Me too. Because However, that, it would be chaos. I don't, I don't want Yeah, no, nah, that's not, not the vibe that we're going for. Um, now, before we move on from this situation that probably won't even happen, um, one thing that I thought was quite interesting. Uh, so Sergio Perez was in press conference with Daniel Ricciardo on, on Thursday for media day. And like you say, these questions come up. Would you sacrifice your home win? Daniel Ricciardo was like, nah, no chance, mate. I'm not giving up a home win. He said, unless it's like literally a case of my teammate has to get my, like be in my position to win the championship. And it's like the final race and it's like the final lap and I give him the, the place, then I'll do it. Otherwise, no chance. Um, and listening to lots of other drivers on Sky, Jensen Button was like, yeah, I wouldn't give up a home win. But obviously Jensen didn't even, hasn't even made it to a podium at his home race um, and several other drivers. So I guess there is still a bit like he got the angel on one shoulder saying, it's a team sport, give up the place and help the team. And then the devil on the other side being like, you've worked your whole life for this moment and you deserve this victory. You know, you have the pace. So I, I'll be interested to see what happens, but I feel like if it does occur, we've yeah, Chico I guess we've not. I guess we've not even gone into the the situation where we, we've not really spoken about Sergio Perez. The the team the team order comes, you know, get out the way. There's three laps to go. Crowd are cheering. He's about to win his home home Grand Prix. Is he thinking? I could, you know, there'll be so many things going through your mind. Adrenaline is a is a massive thing. We've seen uh, drivers before um, ignore ignore team orders and, and worry about 21. it afterwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, exactly. And, and literally at Red Bull in the in the car when when that situation is there, does Perez think? You know, I'd, <laughs> maybe there's things that go through his head where it's like. I'd literally rather not race a Red Bull next year and be fired than miss out on me winning the Mexican Grand Prix as a Mexican. You know, there could be those situations that go through his head and he just ignores it and goes, well, find me then. I'm fine with it. Uh, I want to win Mexico. Um, that's a very interesting situation. That that would be uh, cracking uh, for Drive uh, to Survive. <laughs> I mean, they'd love it, wouldn't they? They'd probably be on the phone telling Checo, ignore this. Uh, yeah. We'll give you a lot of money we'll if you do. We'll tip you off, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. We interrupt this WTF1 podcast. A very quick chat about our sponsor for this episode, 
Manscaped. Attention listeners across the galaxy, all the way from Australia to Houston. Do we have a pube problem? If so, our friends at Manscaped have cleared you for takeoff with their fourth generation and brand new lawnmower 4.0. If you're ready for an out of world experience, look no further than the performance package 4.0 from Manscaped that has just taken off in not only the USA, but Canada, the UK, across Europe, Australia, South Africa, and Singapore. Inside this package, you'll find their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel bag to hold your whole solar system. So what are you waiting for? You can get 20% off plus free shipping with the code WTF1 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code WTF1 at manscaped.com. Trust me, your body will thank you. Right, let's get back to the podcast. Uh, right, well, let's leave that situation uh, in the past and talk about some things because there's there's plenty going on around Mexico. Um, so at underscore Scott Elder asks, do you think Red Bull can leave Mexico back in the lead of the Constructors' Championship? Uh, personally, I don't see any reason why they can't. It's quite a big gap. I think Tommy is probably looking online now at how big the gap is because I can see you suddenly started typing um yeah, but i'm looking i'm looking at the gap because i need to work it out 20 something points uh but yeah like we said earlier in the podcast this is a track that does typically suit red bull um the package that they've got with their turbo because the turbos are such an important part of being at high altitude obviously with the thinner air and less air going into the power unit you're going to rely on the turbo to bring in uh, as much air to that as possible so Red Bull seemed to have a, a competitive package, having said that, in FP1 yesterday. The Mercedes were looking, you know, quick. Um, maybe not as as quick as Max Verstappen, for example, in FP2. But I think it's there's a, there's a high chance that they'll leave Mexico back in the lead of the constructors. And like I said, going into Brazil, that's often a track that suits... Uh, suits Red Bull. And then we have Qatar and Saudi, which obviously we've never raced at before. So... <clears throat> It's an interesting uh, couple of races that we've got ahead of us. I've just worked out and I do not think they'll be leading the championship. <laughs> okay, well, I just read, read out everything I just said. <laughs> no, no, I, well, so, so here's, here's my thinking that... Okay, big um, brain time. Big brain time. I hope I've got, I've got it right because I've just very quickly done it on, on the calculator. So I worked out there's a 23-point gap between them, which doesn't sound like very much, but if... Verstappen and Perez finish 1-2 and um, Mercedes finish 3-4. It's only a 16-point swing, oh. so it's not, enough to, it's not enough to do it. And I can't see that happening. Uh, one, I, one, it would be, I feel like the best scenario for Red Bull would be a 1-2 and Mercedes 3-4. And, it, and even if that happened, they're not doing it. So you'd have to, you, they'd be hoping for a Mercedes retirement, essentially, or or even dropping behind a, a Ferrari or a, even an Alfa Tauri if they're as quick as they uh, they seem. But it, yeah, uh, I'm going to say no, but I think it's their, I think this is their big chance to essentially catch up and show that the Constructors' Championship is still on because there were moments in that season where you just thought, there's absolutely no way Red Bull can win this constructors. Uh, I feel about, I feel like this is the chance to get them back in that sort of talking point. Although we've already had this discussion of they probably don't care as much about the constructors and are willing to sacrifice it to make sure Max wins the driver's title. Exactly. And uh, normally when we come to Mexico, Mercedes have wrapped up the constructors by now. They normally do it kind of around uh, America. I think they might have done it in Russia one year, but I could be talking absolute rubbish. Um, no, they, it's but, always with a few races to go, isn't it? They wrap yeah. it up. So strange to be in a situation where, yeah, could could the constructors could even go down to the wire, never mind the drivers. I just love this season so much. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's so good. It really is. Right, we have a question here from at Dan. 02475676. I feel like I'm on, on one of those things. Text 10 pounds to this number <laughs> and uh, you can give a donation. It's a lot of numbers. Uh, but they said, what do you think of Toto's comments about if there could be a Senna and Pross moment in Abu Dhabi? Uh, now, these comments, 
I believe they were given to a British tabloid here. Um, and it's been a, a popular topic of conversation, obviously. All media want to get Christian Horner's view on things because Toto versus Christian seems to be a battle that's almost as intense as Lewis versus Max this year. Um, Personally, I really hope it doesn't go down to this. I've spoken about it before. I think after Monza saying that, you know, we want to see wheel to wheel racing. I don't like it when the two title rivals come together. I know for the sake of the championship and the drama and the entertainment, like, there's nothing quite like two title rivals, especially in different teams, you know, coming together. It's like a perfect summary of like people clashing horns and stuff. Um, but I would much rather a championship work its way out where they both finish and, you know, one gets the position, one doesn't get the better position. Um, but what do you think of these comments that Toto's made? Yeah, I'm in the same opinion of you where... I th- uh, we ha- we had the discussion in the last podcast uh, where we did the pre-race one of obviously are they going to crash into each other and it felt like it was almost inevitable they would and actually you know it's so much better while like you say the tabloids obviously it's great for them if they crash into each other what we all want to see as Formula One fans is them going wheel to wheel on the track and actually having a, a brilliant race like they did in America um I'm trying to I'm trying to find the exact sort of quotes from Toto um in terms of like the the what was actually was said about this because yeah it, I know I've noticed that like you said that they're, they're almost pitching Horner and Toto against each other like drive that you can tell it's like that drive to survive thing. they've seen how popular that is and then like Sky are now trying to like do it by basically saying like oh Toto said this and and all this kind of stuff and and trying to make it and and the thing is they know that Toto and uh and Christian like love it as well like they, yeah <laughs> they like having a dig at each other and they like being the stars in the spotlight because you know they're, they're you know they're the, the team bosses and they've got their sort of like you know egos and they they want to like be show that they're like the top dog and whatever so and they have a like a they like to like poke fun at each other and stuff so um yeah I saw Horner saying he's disappointed about it goes down to that and we don't want it I don't I don't personally think Toto is saying like I want it to be this um he's just saying that that it could be because you know that could happen but yeah, we we don't want that to happen. I really, really, really don't want that to happen because it just sour the whole championship if if that that happens. Um, yeah, I want to see I want to see the racing like we did at um, America and Bahrain and Paul Ricard and the first Spain. Few Those seconds ones. of uh, Silverstone. Yeah, <laughs> the, yeah, the first few seconds of Silverstone before that. Yeah, um, before the incident was bloody brilliant that's still one of my favorite moments of the whole season so far is those first before they got to cops uh the hamilton and verstappen going to wheel to wheel like it was just incredible it's on the limit every single corner like they they were both pushing the limits of like and max was doing his usual like defending of just within the definition of the rules uh, how you can defend whether like super aggressive so yeah it's more of that please and not not the the monsters and the silverstone actual crash and um, yeah i don't want that no yeah. i don't think anyone wants that no maybe leave us a comment down in the comment section if that's something that you do enjoy about this championship or if you're like us and you just want to see some good wheel to wheel action uh, another question from at do you have fly? I'm sorry if I've butchered your Twitter handle there. Uh, they asked, is there too much DRS currently? Almost half the track is covered by it. Um, possibly. <laughs> We've not seen the race yet, so. <laughs> yeah, this is true. Um, I get why there's DRS in certain sections of the track. Obviously, you've got that huge, long start finish straight, which is good for there but there i think is it a three drs zones at this track mm. yeah well the, the, i personally feel like because the the stadium section well i absolutely love it for the atmosphere and it's amazing 
I don't, you know, it's one of those things where like, it's a bit like Spain, Barcelona, obviously with no atmosphere <laughs> yeah. uh, in terms of it. Like it's not a great complex of corners to basically give you a run onto the main straight. It really does hinder overtaking opportunities while it's amazing spectacle and looks incredible to have the crowd cheering and you see the cars for a long time in the baseball stadium. It looks really cool. It's not great for passing. So it's probably the thinking behind them putting a lot of DRS to just try and get the cars follow each other. But then the problem is you end up in a DRS train. Um, (laughs) Choo-choo. Yeah. Mexico's, Mexico is one of those difficult tr- like tracks. I hope we have a good race this year, but it's looking like a one stop, which is a bit of a worry. Yeah. Um, but it's one of those tracks where I'm always super hyped for it because it's such an amazing event and the people are incredible and they put on such an amazing show and the stadium section is really cool. And the actual track sometimes can be not the greatest of action and quite hard to overtake. So um, we shall see, but. DRS is one of those things where, you know, if they don't put DRS everywhere and there's not a single overtake, everyone will be like, oh, you know, I I think it was Imola uh, one year. They're like, you know, why they put the DRS there? Put it earlier so they get a better slipstream and then they might be able to overtake. But then the problem is if they do that and then it's really easy, everyone's going to go, oh, it's so easy to overtake in DRS. The DRS is way too long. Um, It's a really difficult balance to try and find DRS correctly on the on the circuit because essentially they can't simulate a Formula One race and they're exactly what's going to happen and how well they're going to be able to pass each other in every situation. So it was very well said. Thank you very much. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So um, a few other little stories before we chat about our predictions and wrap this podcast up. Obviously, there's some engine penalties coming out, which, I mean, let's be honest, kind of inevitable at this point in the season. Sonoda and Lance Stroll uh, will be starting at the back of the grid. We've also got George Russell, who's going to be serving a five-place grid penalty as a result of his gearbox issues in FP2. Uh, we've also had some reprimands handed out, naughty, naughty, uh, to Kimi Raikkonen, Nikita Mazepin and Lewis Hamilton uh, for some track limit issues. I think that was what they were for. Yep. So, uh, yeah, plenty to look forward to this weekend. Um, we'll go through our predictions for the Mexican Grand Prix. I shall read out Matt's as he is not here. Uh, so he's gone for Perez team orders, which is <laughs> so very he appropriate. Thinks, he thinks it is happening. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also Sonoda scores points again, which given the engine penalty might be quite a challenge, but hey, he's got a Honda yeah. in the back of the car. So, you know, he's on a, onto a winner there in that sense. Uh, Tommy, what have you gone for this weekend? I've gone for more track limit drama from Alonso, <laughs> which I mean, he's already, you he's could already... argue he's already kicking off about it before we've even, he started kicking off about it before we even got to the uh the first we had any practice kind of session. cars on track, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was like, we need to talk about track limits. So I'm taking that anyway. But nice. What what I had more in mind was the fact that he was just gonna uh Super Mario star it over um the first corner and just overtake about 40 positions and then go, yay. Uh and then claim that it was an amazing overtake. And you know, what a move from Fernando. I passed 19 cars into turn one. Um <laughs> by just eating it over the grass um so yeah uh, and then Perez first pole position oh wow uh, he's gonna we'll have to see. be lifted from the crowd for that to happen but um you never know you never know we'll be able to see if that's true in only a few hours time uh I've gone for a Pierre Gasly top five haven't specified where because I'm that's... smart and uh, Ferrari podium. So uh, we'll see how that goes. And then the fans at Ace Twelve Adam said both Ferraris on the podium. At Stormboy One Seven Two says Russell top five in quali. It's going to be a challenge. That's going to be a challenge, but hey, Mister Saturday might be able to do it. And at oh goodness, this is an interesting one. That's not the handle, by the way. At F R N T try. Andini? Frontry Andini. That one. Uh said DNF for one of the Red Bulls. <gasps> well, I'm sure the oh. Mexican fans hope that that's not Sergio Perez. Yeah, um, right. 
that will be bad. Uh, so, like we say, we've got the qualifying later today, race tomorrow, podcast Monday. Don't forget, if you are a Team WTF1 member, you can watch the post-race podcast with us live. So for more information about Team WTF1, you can check the link in the bio. Um, Tommy, I'm going to do it. Have you got any final thoughts? <laughs> um, I guess my final thought is just I'm glad I've made it through without having a, a major coughing fit yet. I'm proud of you. Thank there you. you. <laughs> I think I'm going to um, go back to bed. <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably wise. We've got quite a few hours until any kind of action happens. So make the most of the rest. Um, and my final thought is, uh, so yeah, hopefully Sergio Perez gets that pole position because that would be really cool. But we'll see. It would be very cool. Be very cool. I've also maybe placed a sneaky little bet on that. So obviously <laughs> would like that to happen for that reason as well. Obviously not endorsing gambling, but uh, would be nice. Um, and yeah, don't forget to check out the WTF1 annual as well. And we will see you for a post-race poddy on Monday. See you later. Bye. Bye.